Welcome back Commodore fans. In this video we are going to look at methods of moving the cursor to a designated location on screen using BASIC. And create a small machine language routine that you can combine with any BASIC program to simplify the process. The default BASIC programming environment on Commodore computers is a full screen editor that lets you move the cursor anywhere on screen by using the arrow keys. This makes it easy to edit basic programs, but how do you move the cursor programmatically? Well, to move the cursor in basic, you have to embed the cursor direction keys in a print statement. First, we clear the screen. Then you create a print statement that typically starts with the home key, which will move the cursor to the top left corner of the screen. Then you add however many cursor down and right keys necessary to get to the desired location, and finally, you enter the text you want displayed. When run, we get the expected result. This is a messy, inefficient method of moving the cursor. What we would rather do is use something like a plot or locate command that lets you enter values for row and column and moves the cursor to that location. Sadly, basic version 2, which the VIC-20 and 64 use, have no such built-in function. So we are going to create a machine language routine to simulate it. To accomplish this, we are going to use the kernel plot routine located at hex address E50A and is accessed through a jump table entry at hex address FFF0. That's 65520 decimal. The plot routine allows the user to read or set the position of the cursor. To set the cursor, the carry flag must be cleared and the X and Y registers must contain the row and column values prior to calling the routine. So let's get into Turbo Macro Pro and get started. The first iteration of this program is going to be a bare minimum example of how the kernel function works as a proof of concept. We begin with a start address of hex 33C, which is the location of the cassette buffer. Then load X with 10. This is the row number, and Y with 15, which is the column number. Then clear the carry flag and jump to hex address FFF0 to set the cursor position. OK, let's assemble. No errors, that's always good. Then we'll switch into BASIC and create a short BASIC program to test it. We start by clearing the screen, and then SIS828 to move the cursor to row 15, column 12, and print some text. And run. OK, it works as expected. That's a good start. Let's head back into Turbo Macro Pro and add some more functionality. Let's clear out the previous code and start from scratch. Remember, our goal is to create a command that will accept user input for the row and column number and should look something like this. Again, the start address will be 33C. Now at this point, I'm going to speed type the expanded function code, and then we'll go back and review it. OK, first we start by calling the routine getByteC, located at hex address B79B. This routine will recognize and skip the comma to read the ASCII program text, convert it to an integer, checks that the integer is in the range of 0 through 255, and store the result in the X register. This routine will do all of the heavy lifting to parse the command. With the row value now in the X register, we transfer it to the A register and push it onto the stack for later retrieval. This is done because X will be overwritten in our next call to get byte C when we read the column value. After that's done, we transfer X to A, then A to Y, so the column value is now in the Y register. Then we pull the row value back from the stack into the accumulator and transfer it to X. Now the X and Y registers contain the column and row values, so we clear the carry flag and jump to the plot routine via hex address FFF0. We're using jump and not JSR because the plot routine ends with an RTS command, and since there is no more code to execute, it returns control back to basic. Okay, let's give it a try. First we assemble. 
No errors, so let's switch into BASIC and test it out. We still have our first program in memory, so let's change that by adding row and column values to the sys command. And run, and success. Next, let's add some complexity by putting it inside a for next loop. We'll add new line 15 for i equals 1 to 5, and then let's edit line 20 so that the row and column values are multiples of i. Then add a next, then we'll list so you can see it all in sequence, and run. Perfect. We now have a working plot function we can use in our basic programs. Let's jump back into Turbo Macro Pro and save the source code with the file name plot.a. When that's finished, we also want to generate an object file named plot.ml. Okay, we're finished with Turbo Macro Pro, so let's reset the computer so we can move on into BASIC and try it out. So now we have this machine language program file. How do we get it into our BASIC program? One way is to just load it at the beginning of your basic program with something like the following. First we test a variable to see if it's equal to zero. Any variable name will work here, as it will always be zero when the program is first run. If a equals zero, then we set a equal to one, and then give the load command. Be sure to include the comma one so that the program loads at the correct address. Once the plot.ml file has successfully loaded, BASIC will restart the program, but it retains the values in any variables. So when execution begins, A will now equal 1, making the statement false, and the program will continue on to whatever its function is. You can do this with any BASIC program, as long as a copy of plot.ml is on the same floppy. The second method to include this routine is to have your basic program read the opcodes from data statements and poke them into memory. This is commonly called a basic loader. Plot.ml is only 16 bytes long and only takes a small amount of space in your basic program. To make a basic loader, I use my own custom machine language program called Data64 to create the data statements. So let's load and run it. and now it's in memory ready for use by using the displayed sys command. Next we load plot.ml then type new to reset basic program pointers and then execute data64 with sys40704 and the start address of plot.ml which is 828 and press return. The screen will immediately fill with data statements, so we hit the home key and then hit return on the lines that we need, which is only the first three, so we ignore the rest. We list the program, and since we know there are only 16 bytes, we remove the extraneous zeros from the data statements. Then all that's left to do is add a line to read and poke the data into memory starting at location 828 and ending at 843. And that's it. You can add these four lines into any basic program you need a plot routine for. Next, let's save this program as plot.bas for future use. And as a final test, we reset the computer and load plot.bas. Add our own code to it, run, and everything works. With this basic loader, you can create a completely self-contained program with the cursor movement function. Moving on to the Commodore 128, which uses basic version 7. The Commodore 128 has the care command, that's C-H-A-R. Care can be used to move the cursor to a designated location. According to the 128 user manual, CARE was designed for use in bitmap mode, but it also works in text mode. You enter CARE, 
then a zero or one to indicate foreground or background color, then the column and row values, and finally the text you want to display. And by adding an additional option after the text, it will be displayed in reverse field. And one final note. There are basic expansion cartridges available like Simon's Basic or Super Expander that have a similar function to move the cursor. But they all have the same problem, which is that you have to have the cartridge for it to work, which makes it difficult to share or sell to people who don't have the expansion cartridge. Okay, well that's going to wrap it up for me today. Thanks for watching, and be careful out there.